Welcome to the Mindset Mechanics Podcast with Juan and Ladybug Jenkins. It's not too late to find, face, and fix what's stalling you. The shop is open, so pull on in. Welcome to Mechanical Mondays. You are in the shop. I'm Ladybug. And I am Juan Jenkins. And we are your Mindset Mechanics, reminding you that it is not too late to find, face, and fix what's stalling you. And when you do that, acceleration into the life of your dreams is inevitable. Yes, yes. In today's episode titled, Look Both Ways, we are going to talk about consideration. Now, we know when we say look both ways, we're usually talking about things like crossing the street, but which is something that we do for safety and for awareness. But in relationships, looking both ways, while it doesn't mean the same thing, it serves the same purpose. So consideration deals with taking time to think something over, to mull it over, to consider it. And in the context of a relationship, when we talk about looking both ways, we are talking about the two people. In this case, it can be more if you're dealing with an entire family. But in this case, we are talking about looking both ways in a relationship. So recently we had a situation, you know, we've been married almost 25 years. We have two children, Noodle and Doodle. And I also take care of my mom full time in our home. So that is five people in our family currently. And it can be very demanding. We also homeschool an 11 and 13 year old, which is a lot. So recently it was one of those random days where the phone rings and it is family from out of town. You know, it's his family and there's a situation and they need backup. And so our life is already busy. Our life is already very full. We already have a full schedule and it really does take both of us to get everything done. And then the phone rings. And so I actually said to him, you know what? Just go. And that wasn't easy for me because I know how I feel with him here. So he had to leave and go several states away. And so I will just let him, you know, not let him, but I'm going to let him talk to you a little bit about that because he has his own way that he was looking. And then, you know, we'll jump back over here, babe. Yeah. So, um, like Ladybug said, the phone rang. And actually, I was outside at the time, and my mom uh, informed me that my dad was going into the hospital for um, for his foot. He's been dealing with some a lot of uh, health issues uh, going on for at least 20 years now. Yeah. And I informed my wife, and she came to me, and she said, I think you need to go. I think you need to go and see about your dad, see about your mom. Um, I have two younger brothers and both of them are out the house. So it's just my mom and my dad. My mom still works. My dad has long retired. So it's, it would be just her at the house. So I know that it's a lot with her working, um, needing to travel back and forth to the hospital, which we saw him every single day. Um, sometimes twice a day, depends on, you know, who was there and what was going on. And I said, okay, let's do it. Um, I, I, I prayed about it and that's what the Lord came up and, and he told me, he showed me, he's like, yeah, you, you, you need to go. So before I even said that, my wife came to me and she said, she prayed and she was like, I think you need to go. So I get this text on my phone saying, hey, your rental will be ready tomorrow. I was like, okay. I said, whoa, tomorrow? So long story short, I uh, picked up the vehicle, um, traveled um, to South Carolina to visit my parents. I was there for about three weeks and, and a few days yeah. um, just to see and, and check on them. And then we had... Um, an emergency in the family, you know, one of my family members died suddenly. Nobody expected it. And so just let me in there. That happened in town while you were there. That happened in town while I was there. Yeah. Um, on a Friday Friday morning, my mom left to go to work around 6, and about 6.30 she called me. And I'm, you know, I'm still asleep. So 
we had to handle that. That took about a week. And um, just going back and forth, checking on my dad. Now, I'm leaving my wife, my two children here. And, you know, just, and, and it kept thanking me every single day. Oh, I know you have a family. I know you have a family. And I'm so glad that you're here. So just the consideration and the understanding of my wife and my two children to allow me to uh, to be borrowed, as my parents would say. Thank you for letting me, <laughs> let me you know, let us borrow you, your husband. Um, even though that's my mom and my dad, and I love them. Um, you know, just just for that support, just for that support, day in and day out. So you know, I would call them. You know, of course, I'm worried about them here and making sure that everything is ran smoothly. Because again, you know, we do have our mother-in-law um, living with us, so it's. It's important to be flexible when, mm-hmm. when you're talking about looking both ways because family uh, emergencies um, arise, but it's also very important. And I would say I'm very blessed and fortunate to have a spouse like my wife to be understanding. Yeah. And, you know, just to to say, hey, I know we need you here, but right now we're weighing the situation and your family you know uh, your parents need you um more right now so i was able to to do that and then you know i caught a flight back home and you know everything is 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 a lot better at home with my parents now and i told him i said it will not be long before we all (laughs) you know uh go up there and see them to you know, just to see, make sure everything is fine. And, and so it's important to spend time with your family, you know, in your own home, but also open up that lines of communications to be able to spend time with your away family. And let that, it, whether that's your in-laws or or who, whoever, aunts, uncles, whatever. So it, 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 it worked out. It worked out. So, yes. That's good. Yeah. So... I'm going to I'm going to share something that I have not shared with him yet. So a couple of things happened while he was gone. And I'll admit I did pray and the Lord was immediately like you need to go. You know, you need to you, he needs to go. He needs to go. And like I said the schedule is already full and our son Noodle was having his 13th birthday. And my husband left a couple of days before his 13th birthday. And my son was, the, you know, the brave soldier and all of that. But when his father was not here for his 13th birthday, that thing affected him. And he talked about it every day until my husband came home and, and you were going to move. It was not three weeks. It was only three weeks. So, okay. <laughs> so I was like somebody in prison. Like I did everything but scratch on the wall, you know, every day that he was gone because I didn't miss him. But my son kept saying, he hasn't seen me yet. I'm a teenager now. He hasn't seen me as a teenager, all of these things. But then the way our church family stepped in was a blessing. Our pastor stepped in. They did a whole celebration. They shouted him out from the pulpit, had a party at the church, all the things. So that part of it was great. And something I have never shared with him, one night shortly after you were gone, but this is how the enemy does like my mentor says, disruption always follows intention. I made up in my mind that I was going to handle this household and this family while my husband was gone. I knew it was going to be a lot. The homeschooling, you know, caring for my mom around the clock. She cannot do anything for herself. The whole thing, I was already terrified, you know, and I put on the brave face and waved goodbye. And I was already, I cried several times while he was gone. But one night I heard one of the children scream. I'm not sure who it was. And something had gotten in the house And it was all the way up on the wall near the ceiling. And I was so scared. I'm not going to lie. Because normally I would be like, "Ah, you know, and he would come and, you know, and handle it. But I learned a very valuable lesson when people talk about being strong for someone else. Looking both ways, I had to look at my children. I knew that my son's birthday was coming. I knew that my husband was not going to be here locking up the house at night, all of that. And I thought about how my reaction was going to affect them. So I came out and this thing was all, and we have 10, 10, 12 foot ceilings in this house. So when I say up near the ceiling, that's what I mean. And I'm almost six feet tall, but it was up there. So I had to 
fix my face. As the old folks would say, I had to get a broom, but I couldn't scream and be afraid. I could have done that, but how would it have made my children feel knowing that dad was not here to back me up? And when I tell you, I got that thing out of this house. You hear me? And then I went in the room and closed the door and cried in a Black does I cry. Oh, 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 oh. You know, and so, and I just missed him so much. I had these moments. But my looking both ways was between he and I. It was between myself and my children. It was between myself and my mother because my husband often assists with like repositioning her, you know, especially when she's in the chair, things like that. He does a lot. He backs me up a lot. And because he's also a nurse, he's an extra set of eyes and ears, you know, keeping an eye on her, assessing her, all of those things. And not having any of that for a full month is a long time. It is a long time. And my schedule is already tight. So without a second person to say, hey, I'll stay at the house while you run to the store. I'll stay here and keep an eye on mom while you take the kids to the library to do school. All of that was gone. And it was a lot. And it was very stressful. And it was very scary. And just not having him to talk to, not being able to rub my foot on him at night. You know, when I go to sleep, having to do the podcast alone even while he was gone, it made me really sad. But. I also had to look both ways with my in-laws. I had to ask myself, what if God forbid something happened to him and it was just he and I and I was here alone? Would I want one of my children? Would I want one of my siblings to come and back me up? So I had to look both ways where my in-laws were concerned. And now when he went, he had no way of knowing that a close family member was going to just pass away unexpectedly. So this was his mom's brother. So her husband is going through all of this. Husband ended up having to have surgery then the brother passes away, like going to work and, you know, just gone. What if my husband had not been there to support her? I, it would have been exceptionally difficult for her. And he talked about his two younger brothers, but one of his brothers was newly married. Like what was it? In August, he had yeah. just gotten just married. Got, he was got, on, oh, he was on his honeymoon when all of this happened. Right, yes. So even if he wanted to back them up, he was on a, a boat somewhere on a cruise. Mm -hmm. So... It was looking both ways for them as well, for he and his new wife. We were part, we participated in their wedding, and now they're on their honeymoon, and they're newly married, so we have to look their way too and consider them. Despite everything that's happening, life is to be lived. And so they're newly married, they're in their home. Let them enjoy that time, mm -hmm. all of the things. So that what I got in my rear view from this, in the rear view mirror is where we kind of use the power of hindsight to look back over the situation after we're out of it, like when you look in your rearview mirror after you pass something and talk about what we what we gained from it. So what what's in your rearview mirror this week? Um just you know, but thinking of others. Um yeah. to uh, j just today, um in, in church service, you know, the pastor talk about sowing a good seed. And, you know, you, you reap what you sow. If you sow good seeds, you reap good harvest. So just to, to you know, when, when, when we first got married, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, I married my wife. I didn't marry your mom. You married that family. You do. You married that family. And, you know, j j like I said, you know, our, our mother-in-law is here. So it, it, w it was like a no-brainer. It was like a no-brainer. Bring her in. Bring her in. We'll, you know, we'll take care of her. We had an extra room in the back. That is my mother-in-law. That's my mother-in-law. Okay, I'm her son-in-law. So you marry that family, you and, and you just you 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 just have to take into consideration because life is short. You never know what may happen. Okay, you you count on tomorrow, and it can go left real real quick. I mean, take the my uncle, he just went to work any normal day. Dropped in. So oh, at, work. It, at, at work. So we never know. We never know. Don't overstep. Don't overlook, um, especially family or, or just anybody that may be going through something. Reach out. Think of others before you think of yourself. You know, don't don't learn to be too selfish. They understand. You know, other folks understand, like, hey, this man has a family, too. And like I said, they kept saying, oh, we're so thankful 
that you know Erica allowed you to. Um, I'm sorry, Lady Punky. <laughs> they don't call me that. They call me Erica. That's my name. <laughs> allowed, allowed you to come and and be with us, and she was like, "Thank you for letting us borrow your husband. We know he got a family." Like she said, my son, I missed his birthday, and you know, because we all had plans. Yeah. Like weeks before. Yeah. Yeah. His been birthday out. <laughs> and, 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 and quite <laughs> frankly, right now, like you just turned. He just had a birthday, uh, yeah, sep- to turn 13 in yeah. September. He's already planning his next birthday. Party. Yes. Like, he's already, so you, 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 but you take into, hey, life, I, people say life is life, and yeah. so you just have to slow down, be considerate, and look both ways. Yeah, look both ways. Look both ways. Wow, yeah. that's good. So what I got from it was, what when when you talked about being considerate, yes, considering others, I thought about his parents, you know, I thought about all of that, but I also thought about him and how he would feel, you know, when someone goes into the hospital, you don't know. You never know. You think you know. Me. You know, I had an associate, their mom wasn't feeling well, you know, I just feel a little off. Took her to the emergency room and she never came out. She passed away that day. So we just never know. But mm-hmm. This was the interesting thing. This is what is in my rear view. So I let go of him knowing it was going to be difficult because it's, it's, it's a challenge with you here. Didn't know he was going to be gone that long, but things kept happening. The surgery and then the funeral, so things mm-hmm. kept happening. And what I thought might be a week to 10 days ended up being a month. But I found strength. When that thing was on the wall, supporting my son, not letting him see me be sad, because my husband is is a very active father, and he's been there. He was he held them, you know, when they were newborn, you know, when they were born, and he's there for every birthday. We plan, we have fun, we go out, and so for a milestone birthday for him to not be there was huge. But in being considerate of him and his fam and his and his parents and all those, I grew. I was blessed. So that is what I got. I put him and his and his family first, but it blessed me. It blessed my family. It strengthened my bond with my children. It strengthened my bond even with him having to communicate over the phone, celebrate a birthday over the phone, all of those things. So in considering someone else, you actually end up blessing yourself, which goes back to sowing and reaping. And there's two scriptures that come to mind. And I will I will put them in the comment section where they're located. But one says, for God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap that. Not something else. Like Pastor Dwight was saying, you won't plant apples and get oranges. That whatever you sow, you will reap that very thing. Mm-hmm. So that consideration, that love, that care, that is what you're going to reap. And the other scripture talks about esteeming others higher than yourself. The word of God actually tells you to consider, to care more, to think more of of someone else Mm -hmm. than you do yourself to put others first, which is ultimately what Christ did. So that is what is in my rear view. And despite the challenges, it, it, it was a blessing. And Mm -hmm. and it taught me about the value of looking both ways, of thinking about the other person and not always trying to put yourself first. So I trust you will allow this to help. And I am Ladybug. And I am Juan Jenkins, reminding you that it is not too late to find, face, and fix what's stalling you. Amen. Amen. (laughs) (laughs) thanks for stopping by the shop tune in next mechanical monday so you can get the tools to find face and fix your mindset and accelerate your life